We are back today with a full in-depth review, and it is a review on a road running shoe this time round, and it is the all new Guide 16 from Saucony. Now I'd consider myself as a neutral runner when it comes to my running gait, and I tend to get away with neutral shoes, and I don't necessarily need any extra support when it comes to my road running shoes. However, the Guide is what we call a guidance shoe, and this is the first time we've featured a road shoe on the channel with extra support in it. So on this, we get a bit of extra sort of substance, a bit of extra structure on the inside of that midsole in the shape of a medial post. So let's dive into the video and find out all about the new Guide 16 from Saucony. Welcome back folks, thanks for joining us for another video, it is really appreciated. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure, your friendly, helpful, running related YouTube channel. Now I've been testing out the guides for pretty much a month now, so let's jump in and give you a few facts and figures about the shoe. We're going to break down the construction in a bit more detail and then we're going to dive into how it performed out on the roads down here in Cornwall. So first up, they retail in the UK for £130 and I've got my pair in my standard sort of UK 9.5 sizing and they weigh in a pretty reasonable 280 grams, especially considering it's a running shoe with extra support worked in. We've got an eight mil drop, so you get a stack height of 35 mil on the heel and 27 mil under your forefoot. And as far as sizing goes, I would say that they're true to size with average width in the toe box. When it comes to the new construction, like a lot of running shoes these days, we've got a twin layered engineered mesh upper. That's to give you that nice comfortable internal fit, good levels of breathability and durability while remaining nice and lightweight. We've got a gusseted tongue with a moderate level of padding attached inside internally in that upper, and you get a good substantial heel cradle to offer you good levels of support in the back end of the shoe. When it comes to the laces, you do get your sort of standard lace eyelets, but Saucony have also worked in their lace locking system. So the laces work through these two bands of material, and then they're fed through the upper and they attach to that midsole. So when you pull those laces down nice and tight, you should get a really good lockdown around your midfoot, giving you a very secure and personalized fit. And finally, we've got a good level of padding around the ankle collar and in the heel. So enough that it's gonna feel nice and plush, but not too much that it's gonna cause you any issues when it comes to fit and hold in the heel. Saucony worked in some overlays around the back end of the upper and those lace eyelets, just to give you a little bit of extra durability. And we've also got a handy elasticated pull tab on the heel, just to make it a bit easier to get in and out of the shoe. Working our way down to the midsole and you get a very similar setup to what you get on the brilliant Saucony rides. But like I said, this is a guidance shoe. So there is a few more differences worked into that construction. So we do have a full power run compound or power run foam midsole. And I'm happy to say that you get a pair of the very comfortable, super bouncy power run plus insoles inside the shoe. But the major difference, like I mentioned earlier, is we get a medial post on the inside of this midsole. Now what I mean by a medial post is there's a small area here of firmer compound or firmer material and all that's going to do is offer the runner a little bit more support, a little bit more structure under their instep uh, if they need it. So perfect if you feel you've got a bit too much medial rotation or over pronation in your running gait. Now like everything when it comes to running, supporting our running shoes is a very personal thing and there's been lots and lots and lots of debates about it over the years. Some people really believe it's a negative thing, we shouldn't have it in our shoes and then other people are all for putting a bit of extra support or structure in a road running shoe. My personal take on it is if it allows you to enjoy your running or it allows you to run pain and niggle free then then surely it's got to be a good thing. And then finally, coating that midsole, we have Saucony's XT900 blown rubber worked into all the high wear areas. So this is going to keep the weight down a little bit while still providing you with good levels of traction and durability. But there you have it, the all new Guide 16 road running shoe from Saucony. Now, it has been a long, long time since I run in the Guide model. And I actually think it was way back when they did the Guide 10s. And that was a lot of years ago. And things have really changed since then. So let's get stuck in to how they performed. Firstly, supportive running shoes have come a long way in the last four or five years. And I'm glad to say that the days of those really heavy 
really super rigid at the midfoot supportive running shoes like the old Brooks Adrenaline GTS or the ridiculous weighted Asics Kianos are long gone and I personally think that is a real positive thing and I was actually really surprised at the, the overall weight of the shoe, the nice balanced feel I got when I was running with them and the softness and the comfort from that midsole even though it does have that firmer compound of a medial post worked in and I've got to say it that it didn't feel a million miles away from my Saucony Ride 15s. Like most Saucony shoes these days it worked really well for my foot shape and it felt nice and plush. Really good levels of lockdown and hold around my midfoot from this lace locking system worked into the upper. So no movement laterally or medially with inside the shoe uh, and really good hold in the heel. So it was just a real comfortable place to be while I was running. As far as the padding uh, in the tongue and around the ankle, just right for me. So felt really comfortable wrapped around my foot, but there wasn't too much bulk there where sometimes that can affect the sort of fit and performance in a negative way. So all in all, I've really enjoyed the performance of the new Guide 16. And I just think it's great to see a road running shoe with a bit of extra substance, a bit of extra support on that medial side if you need it, but it doesn't feel like you're running in a pair of lead boots. So you've still got a pretty lightweight upper construction, a nice, soft, comfortable midsole, and you get that bit of extra support thrown in for good measure. But we've reached our time in the review where we need to get some points on the Run For Adventure board. So let's jump into the scoring when it comes to the new Guide 16, and we're gonna start with the price first. With them retailing in the UK for 130 pounds, I actually think that's a pretty fair price to pay for a solid daily trainer especially when you compare the guide to some of the other brands and other models out there that it's competing against. Obviously, I would always like to see our running shoes more affordable, but like I said, I think that's a fair price for this shoe. So we're gonna give it a pretty reasonable seven out of 10 when it comes to price. Up next is comfort and performance. And like I've already mentioned, I've been really impressed with how Saucony have worked in that extra support with a medial post, but they've still managed to keep the shoe nice and lightweight, comfortable in that midsole and actually fun to run in and that hasn't always been the case when it comes to running shoes with a bit of extra medial support. There's not really anything I would consider changing about it when it comes to fit and performance and I just think it does the job it's designed to do really well. So we're going to score the guide when it comes to comfort and performance a strong 8 out of 10. And finally, let's talk all about durability, which is obviously a really hard thing to score when you've only run 30 to 40 miles in the shoe. I would love to get a good 200 miles in every shoe before every review, but you know that's not very practical and it's probably not gonna happen because we wouldn't be reviewing many shoes every year. But I've gotta say it, it's looking really solid so far. No early signs of wear at all on the shoe. Upper's looking great. Hardly anywhere on that rubber on the outsole, but it would be great if you guys could get involved here so if you put some good miles into a pair of guide 16s get in the comments below and let us know all about how it's holding up when it comes to durability but as far as our pair we're going to score it high because it's looking solid so it's going to come in with another 8 out of 10 so tallying all those points up at run for adventure the new guide 16 is going to score a very supportive nice and lightweight and still highly cushioned 23 out of 30. Now we don't score looks here at the channel because it is a super subjective thing, but we definitely like to talk about them. And I'm a big fan of how the Guide 16s look, especially in this blue colorway. I really like the marbling effect Saucony have used on the fabric. Plus it's also available in lots of different color options in men's and women's. So because of this, it is gonna get a big thumbs up from me when it comes to looks. As far as other road running shoes that will feel and perform in a similar way and offer a similar level of medial support, you've got the ASICS GT 2000s. Again, that's gonna offer you some extra support in that midsole. It's a very similar weight to the guide and it runs off the same eight mil heel offset. However, it is slightly more expensive at 145 pounds. And then you've got the Brooks Launch GTS. So again, a lightweight daily trainer that's gonna give you a bit more medial support in that midsole. However, that doesn't come with the same sort of medial post system. It's actually got the Brooks guide rail support system. So you would get a little bit more support from these and a bit more depth of cushioning in the midsole. 
So wrapping up with a quick conclusion, and I've been really surprised with how much I've enjoyed running in the Guide 16. So if you're in the market for a new road running shoe and you feel or you know that you benefit from a bit of extra substance and support from the shape of a medial post in your road running shoes, then I would definitely recommend checking out the Guide 16s in a bit more detail. So what I've done is I've left a link in the description below so you can do just that. So that brings another full in-depth running shoe review to a close at the channel really hope you enjoyed it really hope you found it helpful and you know what to do if you did hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already only takes a second to do and it is completely free and you really can't say that about a lot of things in the world these days also don't forget you can follow what we're up to on our other social media platforms whether it be instagram facebook or strava but until next time guys thanks for watching thanks for supporting the channel it really is appreciated we'll be back here very very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running like most Sockany shoes these days, it worked really well for my foot shape and I just can't remember the next line. Uh, maybe someone can help me. Maybe if I phone a friend. Oh, it's ringing. Yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. I'm just trying to remember my next line. Um, you, don't, you don't know what it is by any chance. So, oh uh, yeah, so padding. So just the right level of padding in the tongue and ankle collar. Uh, gives me a really plush foot around my... Yeah, I've got it, I've got it. Yep, yeah, thanks very much. Yep, yeah, yeah, speak soon. Cheers, bye.